the Fisherman How To Series it is brought to you by Pet. Let the battle begin. Sure, having the right tackle helps battling big fish, but here are some other tips that can give you the edge during the fight. One, one of the things that's really important is a proper, proper harness and belt. Um, I've seen many times people, um, you know, looking around for belts, they don't fit them right. So it's actually important if you really want to get into offshore fishing, you really got to make the investment and buy yourself a, a harness and belt. It fits you, put your name on it, and when that fish hits, um, it's your belt, it's your size, there's no fumbling around because I'm sure you've all seen it where that guy can't get his belt on and everything's all messed up and the guy gets very fatigued very quickly and uh, when that happens there's a lot of times there's uh, angler error. Don't, don't wait till you're out on the boat to actually set up the harness. I mean, if you went out and you bought one and everything, wherever you bought it from, you know, see if they could help you out to show you properly. Um, you know, adjust the straps and everything. And, and once it's all set up and everything, I mean, it, it'll, it'll fit really any offshore rod. You don't have to worry about that. Your straps are in place, your belt's in place, and it should fit very, very comfortable on your body where it, it's, it's an advantage to you um, that you're going to have over the fish. Most people never go offshore by themselves or with one other person. It's important to have a, a bunch of different belts that may suit a bunch of different people. My wife uses a really small belt, mine's larger. You may have someone even bigger than that that's going to need something a little bit more um, for, for, their, for their size. It's very important for me to have my own belt because I'm so much smaller than Kirk, his does not fit me. So if I try to put his on, it's a mess. I can't bend down. I can't reel up and reel down. So it's important I have my own belt. It's smaller. It's important that I have it fitted so it's ready to go. We don't have to fumble with it. And I actually like to wear my belt while we're fishing because for me, I'm smaller. I, can't, I don't want to get fatigued. Once the fish hits, I'm ready to go. I won't get tired. The, the best thing you can do is really use the belt to leverage the rod and the fish. So I like to hold the rod up high. I like to keep my belt a little bit lower. It gives me a little bit more leverage so I can bend low while I'm reeling and then I can pull the rod up high. It gives you a little more room, especially if you're a little bit, little bit shorter. It gives you that extra leverage so you don't get tired and you can fight the fish efficiently. Party boat tuna fishing has gained popularity in the Northeast over the last few years. There are few with the experience that Captain John Napo has for working the rail. Party boat fishing is very different from a private boat since the private boat is maneuverable, whereas the party boat's either going to be anchored or it's going to be drifting, and you're basically going to be working around the individuals that are on the deck of the boat. Um, here in the Northeast, there's a lot of uh, coolers on the boat, there's a lot of obstacles on the boat, and for that reason, I prefer not to use a harness. Let the rod actually bend over the rail. This is going to allow you to fight the fish effectively well, without well, using well. a harness. Should you use a harness, it's not a disadvantage, but you're going to have to get in and out of the harness as the deckhand requires you to, to get around fishing and tangles with other people that are on the boat. Another important distinction between party boat fishing and private boat fishing is at the end game. When the fish, especially tuna fishing, is in the circles, that's when you really need to button the drag up and don't let the fish get its head. If you're working on a rail, I like to take the drag on the reel and go above strike and I like to actually palm the spool with my hand and don't let the fish get any head. This is where a two-speed reel is very advantageous. Go into low gear when the fish is at the circles, bump your drag up, use the low gear and the rail of the boat to gain tremendous amount of leverage when the fish is at the end game. To receive the latest fishing reports, subscribe to the Fisherman's YouTube page. Click subscribe, then click the settings button and check send me updates. You'll now receive notifications of the latest Fisherman YouTube videos and reports. If you're already a subscriber, make sure you've checked send me updates in the settings so you receive the latest notifications.